but I'm back. Welcome to any replay viewers and to any live listeners. Thanks for tuning in. I am returning to a theme I was discussing before, two strategies for preventing domestic violence and the applicability of that to fighting fascism now. So in relation to the domestic violence prevention strategies, focus deterrence and justice reinvention, sorry, justice reinvestment. Uh, I think they were applied in America to places that were experiencing way above average levels of domestic abuse and homicide. They were not only radical in terms of reduction, but they were relatively quick. And that's what we need now, goodness gracious. But they hinge on deep collaboration between groups that are not necessarily used to working together. So let's adopt that paradigm. We're not used to working with Republicans, but we might have to hold out our hands and start really building broad coalitions, not just complaining about people who have acted against um, values that we hold dearly before, but saying now, here in this moment, now, we need to work together because the consequences we are facing now and going forwards are so severe that our personal considerations about who is the best, who has done the right thing in the past are relatively petty, relatively, compared to the problems of escalating fascism, both in America and around the world. All right, so um, I think it still behooves us to be suspicious of Anthony Scaramucci, but he does seem to be at least calling Donald Trump out in a way that he didn't before. And as such, we include him in a coalition of people willing to name Donald Trump's betrayals of America. We also hold out our hands to farmers who are prepared to say he, um, Donald Trump is hurting American farmers and we don't want to develop ongoing dependencies on $28 billion taxpayer funded handouts to farmers because they still don't replace uh, ongoing trade, trade relationships such as the ones that Trump has ruined with China for soybean products, for poultry products, for wheat products. Uh, China has effectively severed its relationship with American farmers and that's pushed down the price of American products. Here in America speaking, someone who's born here, blah, 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 blah. I think I've seen you before and you are not welcome, unfortunately. And that is because uh, people who decry fascism on the left or complain about Antifa are essentially gaslighting us. Uh, Antifa hasn't caused hundreds of deaths that uh, right-wing uh, domestic terrorism has caused. So sure, people dress in black sometimes and put masks over their faces as they demonstrate against fascists. They're trying to protect themselves from fascists. And sure, some people on the left are idiots and, and genuinely believe that communism is a good system. They're idiots, they're not mainstream left people. And if you restricted yourself to fighting um, extreme leftists, We'd support you, but you don't. You just want to try and pull the wool over people's eyes that all people on the left are aspiring communists, either secret or openly. And that's wrong and that's damaging and that's counterproductive to the good that we want, not just for Americans, but for people all over the world. And we want to dampen the fires of escalating fascist hysteria because it's damaging and we've seen it escalate before. So not just damaging in an oh dear kind of way, but damaging in a millions of people die kind of way. And already millions of people are likely to die in Yemen because the treasonous occupant of the Oval Office, Donald Trump, has already vetoed uh, legislation passed by bipartisan chambers of Congress, the House and the Senate. Or, I mean, the House's Democrat majority and the Senate's Republican majority both chambers passed legislation to uh, end the sale of US weaponry to Saudi Arabia for use against Yemeni citizens, people who live in Yemen. Now the people who live in Yemen are being blockaded, 14 million of them are likely to die by this year's ends. By this year's end. 85,000 children are believed to have already died because children are uh, the ones who are most likely to die quickly in times of famine. And, they have less body fat reserves, etc. 
and their energy requirements are proportionally higher during their formative years. But who talks about that? Who even talks about how much Trump is betraying America? Trump is overturning the will of Americans as expressed through their elected leaders in the, in the legislative branch of your government by vetoing legislation that doesn't advance the interests of the American people, but maintained Trump's um, corrupt relationship with Saudi Arabian royalty, preserves the favours that Trump owes them, owes them for helping him be uh, illicitly and unethically installed as President of the United States in the first place. And yet Trump is somehow beyond, um, beyond accountability purely because he is the President. He's beyond accountability for getting corruptly installed as president because he's president. And America is a victim of that torturous and circuitous piece of logic. What are you talking about? More likely to be stressed by... Unf well, that does not seem relevant. Perhaps you intended to comment on somebody else's post because I'm talking about... Um, the millions of people likely to die in Yemen as a consequence of Trump's degree of beholdenness to corrupt, murderous Saudi Arabian royalty, Mohammed bin Salman and the other ones, whose names I haven't bothered to learn, but I should, because really, can we look away again when a genocide is carried out against a people? My family is Jewish and... The world were horrified after the fact to realise how much they ignored the brutality, the murderousness, the industrial scale killing of people who were Jewish. And we're doing exactly the same thing to people in Yemen because we're just looking away. So, yep, that's something we should talk about. Not only is Donald Trump acting to hurt American farmers, not only has he sabotaged a great deal of the agricultural trading relationships between American farmers and partners, their partners in China. But um, he is also doing great harm to uh, migrant families in the US, 11 million of which live and work in the US, contribute to their communities, are not criminal, um, have committed something that was classified as a misdemeanor or a civil offence for a long time. Uh, is there anything I have to do to invite people to help them, to allow them to help me moderate comments? It's just going to be a pain in the butt if I have to keep lifting up the iPad uh, to mute people who make personal remarks about whether or not my blouse is ironed. No, I didn't sleep in it, but I obviously didn't hang it up enough. Um, okay. High Point, a town in America which trialed um, a strategy, focused deterrence. High Point was the first city to trial this. Within eight years or so, their rate of domestic homicide had been cut by two-thirds. That's so significant that I'm going to click on the link and see exactly where High Point is. Which town is it in? I don't know. Does anybody want to Google where High Point is? I guess I can do it. I don't have to ask other people. High Point Town. TX, Texas. Wow. That's exciting. Oh, no, no. Nope, it is... Well, at least High Point Town Centre is located in Alabama. So I'm still not entirely sure. What do I think about Trump's close ties with Chabad Lubavitch, an extremist Jewish religious organisation? Um, well, I think Israel also helps install Trump. Uh, Black Cube is an Israeli uh, psyops organisation. I think Israel, uh, Americans haven't really 
been pushed to confront the degree to which Israel is essentially an apartheid society that sounds all democratic and great on the one hand, but at the same time, people of Arab background, uh, second class and second tier citizens with second tier voting rights and sometimes third tier, and that people in Palestinian settlement areas have their homes bulldozed, etc. Uh, so yes, people who are extremist Jews are frequently supportive of Trump and donate huge amounts of money to him. Look at how the Adelsons were awarded uh, the like American Medal of Freedom or something, Miriam Adelson, just because they donated a whole bunch of money to Trump and, you know, probably massively supported the way he uh, gave the Israeli government everything they wanted in terms of moving the U.S. embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and doing that without getting any concessions from the Israeli side towards a peace arrangement with Palestinian people. Yes, Shedelson's wife. And, yep, they're for shizzles involved with Putin because corruption is a great way to make friends with other corrupt people. And uh, Netanyahu, the leader of Israel, is under indictment for corrupt, corruption charges in Israel. Um, I still haven't found where Hightown is, but that's okay. We will work it on. Oh, High Point. What is High Point known for? Well, looks like it's also a municipality in North Carolina. Ah, and the 259th largest city in America. Okay, so that sounds like my final answer for where High Point is is not Texas, is not Alabama. It's a city located in the Piedmont Triad region of the state of North Carolina. All right, but the exciting thing is still that uh, that they used a system of focused deterrence based on the work of a US academic criminologist called David Kennedy saying that criminals or people uh, liable to domestic violence should respond ra uh, rationally if offered the opportunity to choose continuing to offend or a system of gradated consequences. Okay. So they had abusers who were identified, then agencies had to work together when they'd previously been working either individually or, or at cross purposes. Um, coming together to have daily meetings with offenders uh, relating to qualitative data being collected on who the most dangerous offenders are and how the various service agencies can combine their efforts to address what's going on in these people's lives that may actually have an effect on their perpetration of violence. They found that after two years of this project and of police being much more proactive and working together with community they had a reduction in the domestic assault rate of almost 40%. That's fantastic. And it shows that working together is a great way of reducing negative outcomes. So who can we work together with to reduce fascism in America? Um, we can work together to have people who are leaders of various community organisations speak out. We can use our consumer power to shame people who donate to Donald Trump. We can do a lot more to articulate the need to preserve those unspoken norms that have held the peace in America, to celebrate and support pluralism, getting together, the people getting along with each other from different religious backgrounds and different cultural practices. Those very American values. That's why I like Beto O'Rourke. If Trump is so against China, then why is Israel selling American technology to China and Russia? Uh, likely because Trump does a tariff war for performative masculinity purposes. So people who vote for Trump like him because they think the world is increasingly feminizing and they, or the West is, and they wanted somebody to act tough. So, um, yep, China and Russia are getting closer together. They have a common goal of wanting to weaken and undermine America. Uh, so Trump owes Russia and America is also significantly in debt to China. So I wouldn't say Trump is against China per se. He is very much in favor of making big noises about how anti-China he is.
but he grants his daughter exceptions from tariffs pertaining to her trademarked um, goods that she has made in China. So I'd say Trump himself at a personal level has lots of trading deals happening with China. Why is Israel selling American technology to China and Russia? To undermine America. Uh, why is Trump selling American nuclear technology to Saudi Arabia and in conjunction with Russia to have some deal where Russia builds nuclear reactors all over the Middle East as part of a new Marshall Plan? Uh, that is called the selling off of American interests in order to benefit Trump and benefit America's enemies who have elected Trump. A.G. Barr is live and is appalled. Appalled by Jeffrey Epstein's death? Yes, he's appalled. It's great that we are making enough noise about these things, that Trump, Trump's lackey, corrupt, terrible, unethical, unprincipled lackey, William Barr, has to pretend and has to make mouth noises about how appalled he is. Uh, I don't know how much it advances him being held to account, but probably a fair bit because the more we get public attention focused on these outrages and betrayals of the American system of, of law, the more it is likely that they will be observed and potentially held to account. Our attention has consequences. The fact that we've read Miami Herald articles about Jeffrey Epstein was pivotal in having people pay attention to Jeffrey Epstein's corrupt, terrible plea deal that violated the victim's rights of those girls whom he uh, manipulated, abused and sexually assaulted and trafficked. Uh, so that the case was freshly opened in New York and there were fresh charges brought, and one of which charges apparently was a conspiracy charge. So the Manhattan Attorney General's office has assured everyone that the case will be ongoing and the investigation will continue. And Jeffrey Epstein is no longer in a position to fight the use of materials seized and arrays on his house. Um, so hopefully that will help expedite the case. Julie K. Brown is a hero. Exactly. And she's a hero who is supported by our attention. So let's value our attention. Let's use it judiciously for good. Pay attention to problems. Pay attention insofar as we can to perversions of justice because people are aware of that now and the awareness is escalating. People are less willing to sit in a complacent bubble with a normalcy bias held close to our chest. Everything must be okay because we want our lives to continue as normal. It's all a matter of how gullible you are and easily persuaded to believe that BS. Yes, well, people have varying degrees of gullibility, but we are having an impact. Our talking about these things, our questioning of these things is having an impact and we must be essentially relentless in order to get continue the impact and escalate it. Um, the articles that I think we should be sharing are articles about Hitler, how Hitler was incompetent and underestimated. Uh, so that, yes, Germany wasn't governed well during his reign, despite um, people's intuitions to that effect. No, the trains didn't run on time. Hitler governed Germany the same way Trump governs America, by gut feel. It, it helps him resonate with his base at an emotional level. They always feel like their wishes are being catered to because he's always saying what their emotions want to hear. So it's so funny, the party where conservative intellectuals are always claiming, hey, leftards, facts don't care about their feelings. They are now a political movement that is entirely lost to schadenfreude, an emotional state in which you are caught up in shameful glee. They are, an, they are a political party of addicts to schadenfreude, emotional addicts to the state of schadenfreude. It literally, I mean, shameful glee. They just keep looking down on left people with these assumptions they're making about how uh, they are supported by facts and we are supported by virtue signaling or a desire for justice and, and good to be done. Whereas they have let their emotions overrule the evidence of facts. They are denying the science of climate change. They are exposing us to danger. 
they are denying the reality of Trump as a literal security threat to America. And yes, there are so many paid promoters, uh, but we can still focus on our own power, what we have achieved and what we can achieve going forwards. Uh, we need to expose, shun and condemn people who use their own self-interest to promote falsities to the American public. We need to come to terms with the fact that, yes, they will accuse us of all manner of things, typically of things of which they themselves are guilty. When they say facts don't care about your feelings, crying snowflakes, yes, there was a great period of grief when people could not reconcile the reality of Trump being elected to their own reality, which said, surely America is a majority decent country. Surely America has been through enough historically to understand that casting aside pluralism, that casting aside standards of decency relating to migrants and people of different backgrounds, surely that is enough to prevent Trump being elected. Well, no, because people dying in, of whiteness, people in communities where Republicans had rejected Medicaid expansion, people who were dying because of the gap between their expectations and their realities was so significant that they were dying deaths of despair, opioid abuse from, again, uh, corrupt perversion of the American medical system where doctors were prevailed upon to pres over-prescribe opioids that were addictive because they'd been told the opioids were not addictive and that if their patients in trials exhibited symptoms of addiction, it was just because they were being under-treated. They didn't have enough of these opioids. They weren't addicted to them, they just happened to need more. And that would, that would solve their problems. Millions of Facebook dollars per day spent on Facebook ads using language that hypnotizes Americans uh, into staying in a state of fear that promotes their adherence and their loyalty to Trump and Trumpism. The idea that America needs to get rid of brown people because only white people will be able to coalesce around a series of white values and white loyalties. Kind of Christo-fascism and white supremacy and um, gun worshipping all thrown into a toxic mix where everybody on that side of the political continuum are all supporting each other. Yes, Cambridge Analytica funded by Robert Mercer, who helps, who owns guns, who helps, who owns gun manufacturing um, companies or has shares in them and, and, and helps run Breitbart and found a, helped fund, found Breitbart. Uh, oh, no, I haven't seen The Great Hack yet. That's a good one, isn't it? Okay, let me put that on my list. I should go. Thank you. I thank you for pointing that out to me. I will write it down. The great hack. All right. Well, I appreciate my audience very much this evening. I started another Twitter account and I broadcast a little video from an alternate account about parenting and zero people tuned in and zero people watched it. And it made me go, oh, yes, when I have nine people or seven people, that does mean something. You guys are the audience that I've built up through, I guess, the regularity of my posting. And if you enjoyed the, the tenor of my contributions, uh, my alternate Twitter handle is the underperforming parent. So the only thing I've broadcast from that account so far is it.